a student sent me this problem online for me to be able to solve. And I thought it was interesting enough that I would make a video on it explaining my process of going through the problem. All right, so the problem was to go ahead and find the zeros. Now, when I'm looking at a polynomial, especially one raised to the third power, and I'm looking at four terms, the first thing that always comes into my head is, can I factor this by grouping? And the factoring process of grouping is to group the first two terms and the last two terms, see if you can factor out a GCF and get the exact same term, so therefore it can be factorable. Unfortunately, in this case though, it is not going to be factorable. So then I'm kind of stuck of like, well, what else can I do? Now, if I had a calculator or graphing technology like Desmos or something, I might just go ahead and graph it and go ahead and identify a zero then once I know a zero, I can use synthetic division. Unfortunately, I don't have graphing technology and I'm putting myself into the picture of, let's say this was a problem that I was given on a test without a calculator, what would I do? So we know that by the degree of this polynomial, we're gonna have three zeros. And one thing we can do is identify the possible list of rational zeros using the rational zero test. So the rational zero test is gonna basically take the factors of your P over your Q plus or minus, and that is going to give you a list of possible rational zeros. So what we basically do is take our constant, which is gonna be P, and we're just gonna list all of the factors. So we have 15, five, three, and one. These are all the numbers that make up our 15. And then we're gonna take the factors of Q, which in this case would be a two and a one. So this is the list of all possible rational zeros. Now, I don't even know if we have a rational zero in this example, but since we do have three, and I know irrational zeros come in pairs of twos, as well as imaginary solutions, I can bet that we're gonna at least have one rational solution. So which one do we pick? Cause you could do 15 over two, five over two, three over two, one over two. 15 over one, five over one, three over one, one over one, again, plus or minus. There's a lot of possible rational zeros. Well, what I always like to do is always start with one and negative one. I always check one, then go to negative one, then I'd probably go to three th and then negative three. So I always start with the smallest and then work my way up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's pretend, let's see if X equals one is a zero. So if X equals one is a zero, what we're simply gonna do is take that value and we're gonna do synthetic division. We're gonna divide that into that polynomial. If we get a remainder of zero, then we know that is a polynomial and the quotient is also going to be a factor. So we take the zero, put it on the outside of this synthetic division bar, and then we're gonna take the coefficients of our polynomial. So we have two, 11, two, and a negative 15. All right, so now let's go through the synthetic division algorithm. The first one you always bring down, that's your freebie. You're gonna multiply on the diagonal, add on the vertical. Two times uh, one is a two. 11 plus two is going to be a 13. 13 times one is a 13. Two plus 13 is a 15. 15 times one is 15. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Boom, we have a remainder of zero. So this is our remainder. This is going to be our constant, coefficient of our linear term, coefficient of our quadratic term. If x equals one is a zero, that means now I could say that x minus one would be a factor times a, let's see, two x squared plus a 13 x plus 15. Right now that is equal to f of x, right? So this times this is going to give you that. But again, remember the question is what are the zeros? So in this case, if we want to find the zeros. You would set that equal to zero. You could apply the zero product property. We already know that x equals one is going to be zero, but now we need to take this factor and set it equal to zero. Two x squared plus 13. Now we need to identify, well, how can we find the remaining zeros, right? I have it to an x squared. I see that it's a quadratic trinomial. I could you go right into the quadratic formula, but I always wanna make sure that, you know, I always test to see the easiest possible solution first. Just like how I did here, I tested one. What do you know, one was the answer. And it's more likely not you're, you know, you wouldn't have like 15 halves or whatever be a rational zero. So let's go and see if we can factor this out. Now I know my quadratic trinomial can be rewritten as a product of two trinomials. So I know that my two options for my two binomials is two X times X. Now I got to think about my factors of 15. What could I multiply by where my inner and my outer products are going to add to a 13 X? I think I don't want to do by 15 because that would give me, I don't want to do 15 and one because that would give me, if I put a 15 here, that'd give me 30. And again, since my constant is positive, that means both my factors both have to be positive and I'm going to add to give me a 13. So I don't want to use 15 and one. I'm probably going to want to use five and three. I recognize here, if I multiply two X times five, that's a 10. And then this would have to be a three. 10 plus three is 13 X. That's going to be my factored form. Now I can apply the zero prior property again. So we have a two X plus three is equal to zero and x plus five is equal to zero. So therefore x is equal to a negative three halves, x is equal to a negative five. So I have one, two, three. 